Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. It's wonderful to see all of you as we join together in worship this evening here at Temple Israel on this lovely Shabbat. It's also great to see that all of you still have all of your appendages after our 4th of July celebration. Apparently there's only been one injury, but it was not related to fireworks. So glad everyone is able to be healthy and mostly whole, at least physically. A few things to mention before we get started here this evening, as always. I'd like to point out the features, uh, the safety features of your local synagogue. First of all, know your exits. Look for the red signs located, which indicate your nearest exit. They may be behind you. They may be next to you. Don't worry. You don't have to uh, lift anything or do anything to go out the local exits. Fire extinguishers are located in the back of the sanctuary. And the mezzanine, as always, have a plan to run, hide, or fight. The defibrillators located in the Temple Israel main office in the case of severe weather, which we are not anticipating during our worship service. Shelter spots are located downstairs and in the main hallway. First aid kits are located in the AV room, the main office, and in the kitchen. As always, if you see something, say something. And at this time, we do ask you to make sure your cell phones are turned to silent. But in the case of an emergency, feel free to call 911. And as always, as a friendly reminder, your cedar ream, your prayer books, cannot be used as flotation devices. And then you may notice that we have a slightly different uh, version of Cantor up here on the Bema here this evening. Cantor Alexander is enjoying her ACC conference, which is actually taking place in Israel. So she is currently in Israel, and her family will be joining her a little later on. And so we have a number, a number by a number, we have two wonderful volunteers who are filling in while Cantor is away. And so we're delighted to welcome Francisco uh, to help uh, lead us in worship here this evening. And Hine Matov, how good and how pleasant it is for us to be together. Name Mato, Kupanai, Shebeta, King Gambia. Name Mato, how good it is, how sweet it is, to be together on this day. How good it is, how good it is, how sweet it is, how sweet it is, to be together on this day. how good it is, how good it is, how sweet it is, how sweet it is to be together on this day. How good it is, how good it is, how sweet it is, how sweet it is to be together on this day. We continue now with the lighting of our Arab Shabbat candles. We promise no fireworks. We invite up Sally and Noah to lead us in the lighting of our Shabbat candles.
Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. And as a reminder, a little plug, next week is Pride Shabbat, and Noah has graciously offered to deliver our sermon next Friday. So not that you need to leave now, but just so you know, we're looking forward to a wonderful sermon next Friday as well. So at this point in our service, as it is our first Friday, we'd like to acknowledge those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. So if you're celebrating an anniversary during the month of June, we'd like to invite you up. Any June anniversaries? July. <laughs> See, you, you don't get any sleep from the fireworks. It just throws you off. <laughs> any July anniversaries? How about any July birthdays? It's got to be, statistically speaking, some July birthdays. You get your child so far, absolutely. <laughs> I'm glad we have some. Otherwise, there could be a riot. <laughs> nope. So in honor of your birthdays, as is a tradition I established here a year ago that everyone thought was crazy, but I've kept with ever since, we invite you to mention one of three numbers, how old you are or how old you be, how old you'd like us to believe you are, or how old you feel. And on Shabbat, all three numbers are valid. Turning 20, Turning 20 mazel tov. 92, mazel tov. <laughs> Working in this office will do that to someone. I'll do 73. 73, mazel tov. And 52K, so thank you for everyone for coming. Yay, happy Your birthday. Happy birthday party. Welcome to AARP. <laughs> 82, but you feel like you're 50. Wonderful, mazel tov, everyone. Well, our prayer for you is that you continue to grow in stature and in kindness and in wisdom. May you continue to grow in strength and in love. May your lives continue to be sell, filled with blessing of community, blessings of family, blessings of wisdom and prosperity. And most importantly, may your lives continue to be a blessing, not just for you and everyone you love, but also for us, because your presence here truly is a blessing to us. And may you continue to go from strength to strength. Together we say... Amen. 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 And we'll join together in the Shech Nianu. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shechecheyanu Vekimanu Vehegianu Lazman Hazeh Of. And as promised, we have chocolate. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. You're very welcome. Happy birthdays, everyone. We continue now with the welcoming in of the Sabbath bride with Lechadodi. Lechadodi, Lechadkala. Shabbat nekavela lechadodi likar kala tene shabbat nekavela shamod zachur vidikurecha ishmiyah 
As we have welcomed in the angels of Shabbat, we now take a few moments 
to welcome each other. So we invite you to look around, and if there's someone you've not yet met or haven't seen in a while, we invite you to wish them a Shabbat Shalom. And if they happen to have purple hair, they might also be our new director of education, and you can certainly meet her after the service. Not naming any names. Well, as we gather together for Shabbat, as Rabbi Bears and Mike's remind us, we let go of the schmutz of the week. The challenges, maybe some of the noise both physical and spiritual, and embrace the feeling of community and the feeling of, the feeling of peace. As we continue with the call to worship, Baruch we invite all of those who so choose to rise in body and or in spirit. standing as we read together give your love wings to soar with the music and the prayers that dance between us that sing around us that rise shimmering to the heavens in radiance and glory give your heart freedom to float breathless in the vastness of the universe to become one with the soul of all being to enter the majesty of light pulsing from the ancient yearnings of our hearts Give your love wings to soar, and when you reach God's holy place, open your hands in blessing. Baruch atadonai, Oheb amo Yisrael. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai. Ani Adonai Loichem, 
asher otzeti etchem meretz mitzrayim liot lachem lelohim ani Adonai Eloichem, Adonai Eloichem, Emet. Please join me if you wish. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there, except by joining hands, marching together. Mi kamocha baili madonai, mi kamocha nedar vakodesh, noga tehilot osetele, Malehutecha, Rauvanecha, Bokeayam, Livne Moshe Umiriam, Zelian Uveamru, Adonai. Continue now with the wonderful song of Shabbat with Vishamru. Vishamru, Vene Israel, Vene Israel, Et Hashabat Lasso, Et Hashabat Ledorotam. Vishameru, Vene Israel, Vene Israel, Et Hashabat Lasot, Et Hashabat Ledorotam, Veritola. Vene Uvein, Vene Israel, Ot Ileola. Shameru, Bene Israel, Bene Israel, Et Hashabat Lasot, Et Hashabat Ledorotam, Beritolam, Ki Sheshet Yamim Asadonai, Et Hashamayim Betaret. Sheshet yamim asadonai et hashamayim betaret vishameru vene Israel vene Israel et hashabat lasot et hashabat ledorotam beritola uvayu. Uvayom Hashvi, Shabbat Vayina Fash. Uvayom Hashvi, Uvayom Hashvi, Shabbat Vayina Fash. Uvayom. Vishameru, Vene Israel, Vene Israel, Et Hashabat Lasot, Et Hashabat Ledorotam Beritolam. Yalai, lai, lai, 
呀，来来来来来，呀，来来来来来，呀，来来来来，呀，来来来，呀，来来来来来，呀，来来来来来，呀，来来来。Continue now with the Amidah, the central section of our worship service, the standing prayers. We invite all those who so choose to please rise in body and or in spirit as we face the ark together. Adonai sefatai tiftach ufi agitehilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips. That my mouth may declare your praise, Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe Avotenu, Vimotenu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor ganora el elyon gomel chasadim tovim lekone hakol bezocher chaste avot bimahot umevi gula livne vnehem leman shemo biahava melechosir moshia umagen baruch atah donai. Magin Abraham, Bezrat Sarah, Atagi Borle Olam Adonai, Mechaye Hakol Atarav Lehoshia, Morid Haruah, Morid Hatal, Mechakel Chaim Bechesed, Mechaye Hakol Berachamim Rabim, Somech Noflim Berofe Cholim. Umatir asurim, umekayem emunato lishene afar mi chamocha ba'al givurot umidom elach melech meimit umekaye umat miach Yeshua. Neman atale hakayot akol Baruch atah Adonai Mechaye hakol Atah kadosh shimcha kadosh Ukadoshim b'chol yom yailu chasela Baruch atah Adonai Ha'el hakadosh Continue with a few moments of personal private prayer. When you are done or when you so choose, you may be seated.
this time in our service, our thoughts turn to our friends, family, and loved ones, all those in our lives who are ill and ailing, and we offer up the following prayer of healing. May the God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless all those who are ill and ailing, including Hal Arnold, Virginia Becker, Jean Brosco, Lisa Brunkhorst, Sandy Christofferson, Steve Glugoff, Scott Farkas, Nancy Friedland, Larry Galinsky, Howard Goldstein, Joan Johnson, Ronald Kaplan, Samuel Kankel, Karen Levin, Bailey Linthicum, Emily Linthicum, Brandy Matson, Michael Ott, Edie Rothman, Mimi Rogers, Holly Rosenberg, George Sachs, Linda Scharf, Rabbi Robert Scharf, Susan Snitzer, Didi Spiegel, Raylene Saboda, Chrissy Swenson, Laura J. West, Brent Wine, Abram Wisnia, Kate Yule, Aviva Bot Kalman. Are there any additions or corrections you'd like to offer up at this time? For those joining us virtually, Jean Herman, Jim Bender, Lois Lefebvre, and Andrea Hargis. May the God of our ancestors bless all those who are ill and ailing with the refuah shlema, a complete recovery of mind, a body of spirit. And for those unable to make a full recovery, may God continue to be a source of peace and comfort in their lives. May God grant strength to those who are dealing with the challenges of mental illness and or addiction and all those who are suffering throughout the world. May God also bless them with healing as well. May God grant strength to those who love them, wisdom and protection to those who care for them, and strength to all of us who love them. Together as one loving family, let us say, Amen. Continue now with the melody of Misha Barak. In times of war and terror, it is the innocent who suffer the most. As the saying goes, war is not hell because in hell there are no innocents. Rabbono Shalom, God, we pray for all those who are suffering. Many the leader, may the leaders of the myriad of communities recognize the humanity, not just of the other, but also of their own. As always, we pray for a resolution to this conflict. And may all the descendants of Abraham, the children of Isaac and Ishmael, 
come to see the humanity in each other. For on that day, peace can dwell upon the land and her inhabitants. And until that day, we pray for all who are suffering. We ask you, God, to bring comfort to them and to all those who are bereaved. Amen. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. everybody had a good fourth as rabbi said you know we're all here with all of our appendages my kids sound machines really really did their jobs last night i don't know if anybody else did but they they took one for the team and it was a great thing so most shabbats as rabbi sharf mentioned i ask you to leave your schmutz at the door to take the stress of the week and leave it out there for the 25 hours that we have of shabbat and the truth is that directive is as much for you as it is for me as well, because all of us need that reminder. We all need the reminder that Shabbat is a place of peace for us and an opportunity and a gift that we have. And over the last weeks and months, though, I found myself under even more stress, a little bit less easily able to leave my schmutz at the door, feeling anxious and worried dealing with the trauma both of daily life that seems to be more challenging because we have those normal stressors, the daily concerns about our children and our families and our communities. We have the stress of the world we live in though too. We have the stress of an ongoing war, the catastrophic loss of life, hostages yet to be returned home. We have escalating court cases here in our state and in the community nationwide laws and policies that derive, uh, deprive us of our religious liberty and personal autonomy. We live in a time of es increasing and escalating anti-Semitism. In January, the ADL re released a report that said in the three months since October 7th, we saw a 360% increase in anti-Semitic incidences. All of this is true. But it's also true that we live in a time and a place where the 24-hour news cycle can easily convince us that that is the only truth, that the dire reality of the endless worst-case scenarios is the only thing that's out there, that there is no goodness and no light, light and no hope. I think we've all gone that, down that rabbit hole before. And yet, this week I've seen something different. This week, I saw people coming together in our communities as friends and neighbors in celebration. I saw people in my neighborhood who oftentimes have political endorsement lawn sign battles, barbecuing together and enjoying fireworks on their front porches as neighbors and friends. I saw people marching in their, in their towns and in their areas that they live in. I saw diversity in religion and ethnicity and socioeconomic status. I saw people coming together to celebrate freedom and democracy. And in that celebration, there was a kernel of something greater. There was the hope of a brighter future. And we as a Jewish community have a part in that, a piece of that history, because we too came to America in the search of that same hope of a future free of tyranny and persecution. And so tonight, instead of focusing on the worst case scenario, all of the traumas and the dire realities that we live in. I wanna invite us for just a few moments to leave our schmutz at the door and turn to a piece of our history that I'd like for us to read and study together. So for those of you who are here, you should have gotten a handout on the way in. And for those of you online, Dory, our Sue Maven is putting the source sheet up into the chat and you can click on the link. So here I have for you two pieces of our history. One of the oldest documents that we have, which is first a letter from the Hebrew congregation of Newport, Rhode Island, which is a message and a letter that they sent to George Washington, August 17, 1790. And then on the following page, if you flip it over, you'll see a reply from George Washington to the Hebrew congregation of Newport. That's a really important piece of our history, the fact that George Washington personally responded 
to this community. So I'd like, they're not very long, I'd like to read them together because I think that they have some really interesting and important kernels of, of wisdom. Has anybody here just a show of hands read these before? Okay, so Sam and, and Joseph, Lisa has. They're interesting. Let's look at them. So in the message that was riven, written by, um, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce his last name, but it's Moses Mendel, I think it's Sykes's. Do we have it in it? Sykes's, maybe? Sure. We agree. Two rabbis make an opinion, right? So he is the kind of, I, I would imagine that it says warden. I'm going to imagine that it's something like our president. So imagine that Justin signed this letter. So, sir, to, to George Washington, permit the children of the stock of Abraham to approach you with the most cordial, cordial affection and esteem for your person and merits and to join with our fellow citizens in welcoming you to Newport. The pleasure we reflect on those, with pleasure we reflect on those days, those days of difficulty and danger, when the God of Israel who delivered J David from the peril of the sword shielded your head from the day, in the day of battle. And we rejoice to think that that same spirit who rested in the bosom of the greatly beloved Daniel, enabling him to preside over the provinces of the Babylonian Empire, rests and ever will rest upon you, enabling you to discharge the arduous duties of chief magistrate in these states. So we, they're setting up this, you know, this bringing in of Jewish texts into this letter, right? So this is a Jewish community in Rhode Island. They're writing to the President of the United States, they're writing to George Washington, the great George Washington. They talk about and they bring in David, they bring in Daniel into their letter to set up this kind of perspective where they're saying, we hope all of these blessings come upon you. Deprived as we have hitherto been of the invaluable rights of free citizens, we now with a deep sense of gratitude to the almighty disposer of all events, behold the government erected by the majesty of the people, a government to which bigotry gives no sanction, to persecution no assistance, but generously affording to all liberty of conscience and immunities of citizenship, deeming every one of whatever nation, tongue, or language equal parts of the great governmental machine. This so ample and extensive federal union whose basis is philanthropy, mutual confidence, and the public virtue, we cannot but acknowledge to the great work of great God who rules in the armies of heaven among the inhabitants of the earth doing whatsoever seems him good for all of the blessings of civil and religious liberty, which we enjoy under an equal and benign administration, we desire to send up our thanks to the ancient of days, the great preserver of men, beseeching him that the angel who conducted our forefathers through the wilderness into the promised land may graciously conduct you through all of the dangers and difficulties of this mortal life. And when like Joshua, full of days and full of honor, you are gathered to your fathers, may you be admitted into the heavenly paradise to partake of the water of life and the tree of immortal immortality. So we have this beautiful letter asking for God's blessing, drawing on so many of our ancient texts, bringing in David and Joshua and Daniel. And not only did they send this letter, right? Imagine sending that letter right now. It's a beautiful letter, but it's not necessarily how we would normally write a letter to, you know, if we were writing to the president. But not only that, we have this reminder that we have not been given the rights of citizens in other lands, right? This is America. We've come to this place to escape persecution and tyranny. And now we have a government that is committed to religious liberty. In fact, the article below, above this on the first page, it is the part of the Constitution that guarantees freedom of religion. And they're acknowledging that and thanking George Washington for having such a government. And then George Washington replies to them. And in it, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but in it he expresses gratitude for his warm welcome to Rhode Island. But then it talks about, if you look at the kind of second column in there, the citizens of the United States of America have a right to applaud themselves for having given to mankind examples of an enlarged and liberal policy, a policy worthy of imitation. All possess alike liberty of conscience and immunities of citizenship. It is now no more that toleration is spoken of as it was by the indulgence of one class of people that enjoyed the exercise of their inherent natural rights. For happily the government of the United States, which gives no bigotry, no sanction to persecution, 
no assistance, requires only that they who live under its protection should demean themselves as good citizens in living and giving it all of the occasions effect their effectual support. It would be inconsistent with the frankness of my character not to avow that I am pleased with your favorable opinion of my administration and fervent wishes for my felicity. May the children of the stock of Abraham who dwell in this land continue to merit and enjoy the goodwill of the other inhabitants while everyone shall sit, sit in safety under his own vine and fig tree and there shall be none to make him afraid. George Washington also drew in the vine and fig tree, the notion that we are part of a democracy that establishes as a foundation at its core religious liberty for all, not merely toleration, as he says in this letter. He says it's not about tolerance anymore. Tolerance is something that is gifted and bestowed by a class that already has rights. That is not the foundation of the United States, he says. Instead, we're not working towards tolerance. We already have laws that establish that we should all be able to live freely. And so in studying these things, and I could talk about these for longer, but I, I won't so that we can all get home tonight. But we see that the Jewish community too has a part of this American dream, a part of this American experience, and that we are still part of that great experiment and that we have to work every day to be part of the complexity that is the United States of America. I think sometimes we're tempted to say that it's too challenging, it's too broken, it's too complicated. And if you do look at it through a single lens where you're going down the rabbit hole of social media and everything is terrible and the endless news cycles make it draining and traumatic, then that can be all that we see. But we also have to remember that like we may have seen this week, I know I did, that there are good people with beautiful dreams that mirror the kind of world that we want and that we should work for. The great American experiment is not yet over and we cannot let it fail because we throw up our hands and say that it's not worth fighting for. Because friends, it is worth fighting for. It's worth fighting to continue to shape the kind of society that we want to live in, the kind of country that we want to raise our families in, the kind of place that allows us to have liberty and justice and freedom for all. There's a Hasidic teaching that reminds us of this truth, the need to see multiple perspectives. Martin Buber teaches that, Rabbi Simcha Bonin teaches that every person should have two pockets. And in one pocket, there should be a piece of paper saying, I'm only dust and ashes. And when we're feeling too proud or too high and mighty, we should reach into this pocket and take out that piece of paper. But in the other pocket, there should be a piece of paper that says, for my sake, the world was created. Because when we're feeling disheartened and low, we should reach into that pocket and take that paper out and read it. We can't forget the pain and trauma and the dissonance and the brokenness of our world, but neither can we forget the other side of it too. The failures and the brokenness motivate us to do our part to fix it. But if we only see the brokenness, then we forget that this can be a great place of dreams and hope that's worth fighting for. Just like that teaching, we have to have both in our pockets. We have to hold both in our hands. We have to find the balance that both can be true and do our part to find a way to fix that brokenness. Shabbat shalom, everyone. I invite everyone who is comfortable and able to do so to rise as we turn to the Alenu. Alenu la shavea, la don hako, la take it la yotse reishin, shalom samuk do yun arasot, la no samanu kemishkakot adama, shalom samuka kemishkakot, le gora venu keho hamuna, va ana. Shabbat 
At this time in our service, we take the time to remember those who are no longer with us physically, but whose shoulders we stand upon, who we bring into every aspect of our being, whether or not they are standing beside us or sitting in the seat next to us, the people who we still establish their legacy as we speak their truths and share their memories. If I say the name of a loved one, I invite you to please rise and remain standing if you're comfortable and able to do so. We are in Shiva the first seven days of mourning for Aaron Bat and Pearl Moskowitz. We're in Shloshim the first 30 days of mourning for Norm Bleicher, Peggy Nog Deland. And we are, in, we are observing the art sites of William Ashley, Dr. S. Edward S. Cohn, Robert Bob Cohn, Ben S. Danbaum, Minnie Becker Deegan, William S. Deegan, Trudy Ingle, Harry E. Fine, Sylvia Paperni Friedlander, Nettie M. Gladstein, David Groff, Alexander Gudis, Renee Haff, Irvin J. Harris, David Jacobson, Howard Kaplan, Gary M. Kaplan, Laser Cavage, Edward Cohn, Cantor Manfred Kuttner, Samuel Logasta, Milton Maper, Owen Lloyd Meyerson, Larry Munsheimer, Pearl Nadler, Bessie Perelman, Rachel Leah Rockman, Lillian Cohen Roberts, Charles E. Rosenstock, Alfred Sachs, Ella Scharf, James I. Schamberg, Ronald Gary Stein, Edna Tatelman, Robert A. Weinberg, Herman L. Weinstein, Stanley Weiss, Rose Wolpa, Scott Allen Wolpa, and Philip A. Wright. If there are any additions or corrections, I invite you to share their names so that we can remember with you as one community. There seem to be having some technical difficulties, so there, Cedar Raymond, in front of your chair, I believe we are on page 598 for the Mourner's Kaddish. Oh, no, it just came up. Thank you. We say it together. Yikadal, be yikadash, shame rabba, be alma divrach yirute, be amlif malchute, bechaye hon uviyome hon, uvechaye dechol be Israel. Ba'agala uvizman kariv v'imru amen. Yehesh me rabba mivarach le'olam ulame amaya. Yibarach v'ishtabach v'yipa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase. V'yitadar v'yitale v'yitalal shme dekudasha v'richu. La'ela minko birchata v'shirata. Tushbachata v'nechamata. Z'amiran ve'alma v'imru amen. Yehesh lama rabba min shemaya. V'chayim alenu ve'al kol Yisrael. Imru, Amen. Ose shalom bim ramav, hu ya ase shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, ve'al kol Yoshvei Tevel, v'imru, Amen. Zifar nam livracha, may their memories always be for a blessing, we say as one community, Amen. Please be seated. A few announcements before we conclude the Shabbat service. First of all, thank you to our musicians, thank you to Julie, thank you to Rabbi, and thank you to Francisco for providing such beautiful singing for our Shabbat. We want to thank our back of house, Scott and Ed, this evening. On tech, we have Eli, our hospitality from Toby's team, our Oneg shopper. We are grateful, thank you, 
to Joan Shapiro and our ONAG volunteers. And we had Alana, Logan, Nora, no, nope, Alana, Francisco, obviously, yep, um, unsurprising. We thank OPD for our security and a special thank you to our Zoom maven, Dory Bernstein. If there are any members of our Board of Trustees here, I invite you to please rise and say a Shabbat Shalom to the congregation. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Few things going on. There is still plenty of time to register if you are interested in our adult civil rights trip taking place April of 25, so next April. Initial deposits are due August 15th. If you have questions, please reach out to me. It's going to be a really wonderful experience. We're going to Memphis, Birmingham, Montgomery, Selma, and Atlanta. So I hope that you are interested in joining us. We're also getting ready to host our next Building Racial Stamina Cohort beginning on August 1st. If you're interested in participating, it's led by our very own Berta Ackerson, Kat King, and Alan Platt. Please reach out with any questions. And also, as Rabbi mentioned earlier, Pride is next week. Yes, in Omaha, we celebrate Pride in July instead of June. It just lengthens our Pride celebration. Unless you were listening to me at the start of service where it's still June, so it's okay. That's true. Either way is great. So we are going to gather on Friday night for a Pride um, Shabbat blessing under our rainbow chuppah. Noah will be giving our Devar Torah. And then on Saturday morning, we'll meet at the Brandeis building for our Rise and Pride Shabbat services, followed by marching together with our, I believe, new and improved rainbow chuppah, if I'm not mistaken. So everybody should come and join us. We'll be marching, as always, with the entire Omaha Jewish community. Please join us. Rabbi Sharf will be teaching his class next week, July, beginning July 17th, not next week, the week after. Um, Jews and comic books come uncover how Jewish experiences influenced iconic heroes like Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, and more. And finally, save the date, we're going to be having a Shabbat under the stars on August 23rd. Services will take place downtown at Jean Leahy Mall. We'll be doing a BYO picnic dinner from 5 to 6, and services will begin with at, uh, at 6 with a light onig to follow. And as a bonus, Jean Leahy is showing Disney's Wish on the Lawn, following that at 8.30 p.m., another family fun event if you want to extend your Shabbat. So all of this, much more going on. Please check our website and calendar for more information. And we invite everyone to please rise if you're comfortable doing so for the Kiddush. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kishanu Mitzvotav Veratav Anu Veshavak Kosho Veahava Uvratzon Kintilanu Nikarum the Masse Vereshi, Kihu Yom Tehila, Lemi Prae Kodesh, Zeche Lipsiat Mitraim, Kivanu Baharta, Veltanu Kidashta, Mikolim, Veshavat Kosheha. We have our mosi as we thank God for sustenance. Thank you. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Amosi lachem in haaretz b'teyavon. One final announcement before our closing song. If your name is Julie Snitzer Levine, please raise your hand. Oh, her. Okay, so this is Julie. You can. I want everybody to go introduce yourselves to Julie at the ONEG. Julie is our new director of education. She's here with her hus husband, Jason. And they are. this is our first official week in our community. We are delighted to welcome them to our temple team. So please go introduce yourself and look forward to meeting with her and working with her throughout the next many years. And believe it or not, it's now actually a requirement for the senior staff for almost all of them, their spouses have a first name beginning with J. It's true. <laughs> it's true.
Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom.